Yes, well, good boy, Ken. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to talk about a few things. I'll probably start with purpose and values because we are at core here, and it's very important to talk about purpose and value. And um, I'll just go through the list as quickly as we can. We've only got 20 minutes. So purpose, I just quickly run through that. So myself, I work as a full-time accountant for a Silicon Valley company. And, but I've got a passion and, a per and I found a new life purpose to restore land. I've been doing that for the last 10 months on a part-time basis. And I'll show you how if one person can do it, and if we have a thousand or a million more young people like us, we can really change the world. So uh, the purpose I find in my life is to combat desertification and restore land degradation and safeguard biodiversity. So my mission is to inspire young professionals like myself and so many out there to really create and adopt a regenerative inclusive economy that we can build. I'll demonstrate in a few minutes. And I'm urging young millennials to find their life purpose because I'm borrowing that from, from Chris. You are tomorrow's leaders today. So um, that's it. Next slide. So that's my company that I created uh, 10 months ago. So Trey is for a colleague of mine that I, I bring, bring into the, brought into the business. His name is Traore. Dom is my surname, Doma. And um, so what I want to say is the future of land degradation neutrality and desertification control is here. There's an unhidden or there's a hidden potential that people don't see. We've seen a lot of companies going into renewable energy, solar, wind power, because there's a lot of return in those tangible businesses out there because I think um, we've just been told that there's been a huge mainstream talk about PV, but every hectare of investment in a solar pr project does bring a lot of investment or return on those investments. That's why people see it is tangible. Right. So um, when I started 10 months ago, um, I went to, happened to go to, to meet UNCCD and meet Elyon, one of the biggest desertification control company in the world. And um, what I want to say here, we've got, to, we have until 2030 to achieve the global goals. If we fail it, we fail it. And it's not just me, it's the whole world failing it. So we've got 12 years, the time is ticking, and we've got to work very quickly. Right, why does it matter? As I said, there's only 12 years left, and the traditional ways of restoring land is not sufficient. We have to move fast. 12 years will just disappear so quickly. We've seen a huge increase in global population, but we've seen a decrease in land, arable land. So we're losing 12 million hectares of land to desertification every year. And that's huge. And population is about to grow to 10 billion in about 2050. And that equates to about 6 trillion in lost GDP worldwide. So therefore, we need rapid, sustainable, and green technologies to really come now. Right, so how do we achieve it? What I've found is to build partnerships, or collaborative partnerships, with the United Nations, so working with UNCCD, and also partnering with the world's largest desertification control company, and they're also the world's largest environmental and ecological company. Right. So that's on our new website that's going to be released in a few weeks' time. So we're saying we're greening the deserts. And yes, we can do it. I'll demonstrate in a few minutes. So our focus is SDG 15, because I believe that, or we should believe that, SDG 15 is the mother of all SDGs, because we, we all need a piece of land to live on. We can't live in, in the ocean or the sea, or we can't go to Mars yet. And that's not true. Right, so um, something I built very quickly by saying that SDG 15 is the mother of all SDGs. Through SDG 15, you can actually achieve all other 16 SDGs by giving land the respect and value it has, and that will create livelihood to people around the world. We have a few technologies. One of them is called liquid nanoclay, and uh, we're taking them to China soon, where we're going to do large-scale desert greening. Here, there's a field test as new as three months ago, less than three months ago. That's clay soil in Greece. That's our test field. You can see it's, it's, it's very hard and, and it's clumped. And it cannot grow 
stuff on there very quickly. So just watch the dates there, 24th of April on the top, 24th of April, we've cleaned the soil, we've put some drip irrigation, irrigation system on there. The 9th of May, we start to see the seeds growing, right? That's through our technology there. 14th, three weeks down the line, still growing. 30th, which is just over a month, and you can see the difference that we can make to the soil. This 4th of June, still growing. Flowering, 16th, has grown up to 50 centimeters. And now we're harvesting on the first, first of July. And that's less than six weeks. Isn't it magic? <laughs> right, on the fifth, we're just showing that we've just harvested everything and it started to grow already up to six centimeters. I think it says there. Right, that was a trial for in Morocco with another technology that we have called Gelo. It's from France. And here are our technologies that we have. Uminex, the one that we've used in Greece and Abu Dhabi. Jolo, it's from France, in Morocco. Liquid nanoclay, we've done in Egypt and in Pakistan. Here we are, the test we've done so far. There are the three products we have there. Now, the next steps. We have millions of hectares of degraded land around the world. And we're not talking about deforestation here. We're talking about going and finding those degraded land and regenerating them and creating wildlife again if we can, or creating livelihood for small farmers or grassroots people. By actually looking after degraded land, we can create an economy which is much bigger than a fossil fuel economy. A bit of savings that we can achieve, 50% water, water is scarce. People like people in Saudi Arabia, they know the value of water, because it's very scarce, people in the Middle East. Why does it matter and why here? So all those, I want to talk about finance now, which is the topic of this, right? So by demonstrating within six weeks, we can convert degraded land into commodity, if you want to call it. We'll have an influx of investors coming in because we've shown, shown that solar has got return on investment, which takes five years minimum, or eight years or 10 years. But here we can show you within a few weeks, you can have your money back, right? And within two years, you get all your money back if you invest, do invest in it. And here, we want to add value to society, to environment, to ecology, that'll serve us all, all, all odds, and also create an agroforestry and forestation company. With the nanoclay, we can create a forest, or we can create the base to a forest, a piece of land within seven hours, which is magic. Right, so what's needed to build a regenerative economy? Like minded stakeholders like ourselves here, we're all sitting here for a reason, because we do love uh, land restoration. We need a bit of grants from organizations out there that can help. And also we're looking for in impact investors. We'd be happy to invest because they're not just investing in fossil fuel, they're investing in land and regenerating land. Right, the mission is that we haven't lost the battle yet. We do see a lot of mainstream media are talking about desertification that, yes, we're going to lose all our soil to desert. No, we can actually re we can re conquer those desert and convert into green land again. Right, other projects that we have in the pipeline, still solar. We're looking at mining sites, disused mining sites that we can convert into either forests or agricultural land. Reflection time now for all of us. Marco. So we are urging current regenerations, all of us here, and also our young millennials to find the life purpose. Find that purpose in your life. Right, I come from Silicon Valley. I want to work for Apple, for Windows, name it. But there won't be, no, there won't be any future if we keep chasing for those tech companies if we don't have a land to live on. Because the next war that's going to happen is going to be over water and land. So there you'll find the likes of Windows and, and Apple just just dying overnight. So we have to take care of our land. If I can achieve that in just 10 months, why can't we collectively achieve more? And alone I can do little, as I say, normally, but together we can change the world. The question to you is, can we? Can we guys change the world? <laughs> okay, thank you.